compost video. Compost is something that's very close to my heart. I made a brand new little like garbage pail compost system in my new backyard. It's pretty silly, but it works really well for small yards and for my specific situation, having a toddler and small space, it's nice and contained that way. So it's sort of a garbage pail system. I bought two brand new garbage pails, about 15 bucks a pop, uh, with lids, and then I drilled holes all over it, all over, all around, and especially important at the bottom. I also have them propped up on wood blocks right now, eventually cinder blocks. For me, having multiple bins is key. Because they're not very large, you have one that's sort of actively composting, one with possible materials you might want to add, and then I always have another bin with lots of leaves for a specific purpose. Anyway, back it up. Let's start by covering the very basic information you need to know. So you might already know this, but this is also for like ultimate compost beginners. When you compost, you want a specific ratio of carbon to nitrogen. And people will tell you that ratio is typically 30 to 1 carbon to nitrogen. Right away, there's people that are like, math ratios, hate math, hate chemistry, get me out of here. I'm going to the store and buying bagged compost. See you later, plant speak. Hang on a sec. It's not as complicated as some people make it out to be. Okay? If you don't even like talking carbon and nitrogen, you can think of it in terms of colors. Browns being the carbon, greens being the nitrogen. Think of a ratio of browns to greens. Browns are things like dried leaves, newspaper shredded up, paper shredded up, straw, and greens are things like food scraps is the big one. Um, grass clippings, manure is actually uh, a very big green even though it's brown in color. It's a huge nitrogen source, so it's a green. And listen, you can get so specific with composting. If you're one of those people that like wants it down to a T, is a mathematician, or you like to write things out, or whatever, uh, maybe this video isn't for you because I'm being rather general. I want people to know how easy it actually is to compost and how fun. Okay? You don't need a scale, you don't need a calculator, you don't need to go out and buy like a fancy pre-assembled compost system that costs $300 or whatever. You can just make a pile in your backyard, a giant pile. <laughs> it's totally up to you how you do it. You just have to know about the brown to green ratio and just be aware of these following things. A successful compost needs four things. The browns and greens, carbon and nitrogen sources that we talked about and moisture and air. Compost is an aerobic process. It needs air. That's why a lot of people will turn their compost regularly. That's why I drilled holes in my garbage bins because I want that ventilation to be throughout. The best example I can always think of for moisture is you want your compost to be like the consistency of a wrung out sponge. Okay, you're not sopping wet and dry. It's not going to work either. You need that moisture in there as part of the process. Location-wise, you want it to be in kind of a shady area, uh, somewhere where it's not going to get heavy, heavy rainfall so that it becomes sopping wet. And play with it. It's important to know composting is all about experimenting, okay? Experimenting, experiencing, adjusting that ratio <laughs> if you find that something is not happening the way it should. Speaking of which, let's do some troubleshooting. Your compost should never smell bad, okay? If your compost smells gross, likely what's happening is your greens are too high and your browns are too low. Remember that our ratio is like pretty high. You need quite a bit of carbon to nitrogen or browns to greens. So probably what's happening is you've put in too many food scraps. That happens a lot because people create a lot of food scraps in their kitchen. Bring them onto the compost, dump them, walk away. Don't do that. You want to mix in the food scraps so that they're kind of spread out and have as much contact with the browns as possible. Also, every time you add greens, you need to add browns to keep that ratio level. And if it does start smelling, it's not a big deal. Now that you know this, you can just add more browns. Just go, mm, it's kind of stinky. I'm going to add more leaves, mix it around a bit, check it in a week. 
Does it still smell bad? Do you need to add more? It's really quite a game. As a general rule of thumb, I'll do like four times as much brown as green. So if you take out a bucket of food scraps, I would add four buckets of dried leaves. So you have to have quite a bit of browns handy to make sure your ratio is staying in that healthy level. On the other side of things, if you find that your compost is just like really slow, maybe it's been a long time and you're not really noticing much is happening, you're also noticing it's rather dry, you probably have too many browns or the moisture is not good enough. That's much less likely to happen. Uh, usually the food scraps are overdone, but it's good to know either way. If your browns are too high, add some greens and maybe a little bit of moisture. Check for that wrung out sponge moisture level. Something I like to do is keep my compost insulated. Now, my curtain bin system is very small, so it's kind of hard, but I do really like to have a thick layer, like at least a couple inches, three inches, six inches is great if you have a bigger compost system, of browns. I actually use straw at the bottom of mine for insulation, and it kind of helps that you don't just get like a cesspool of food scraps on the bottom because you don't want that. <laughs> Sometimes when you're turning your compost, um, you can't quite get all the way to the bottom. So this kind of avoids that uh, cesspool food bottom situation and keeps your compost warmer. Thing is, there's like an ideal temperature uh, for compost where the decomposition will increase and then these bacteria called thermophilic bacteria will actually show up and increase the whole rate of decomposition. So that's kind of like a perfect little cozy compost world. It doesn't have to be that way. The decomposition will still happen. It might just happen at a slower rate. Talking about insulation leads me to the last topic I want to cover about basic composting. Winter composting. You can compost in the winter, Jacqueline, can you? Of course you can! You can compost in the winter. It works, trust me. Usually it's slower, but you can absolutely bring your food scraps out in the winter and add, keeping that ratio in balance, all season long. Now, I live in zone 3B, so yeah, it's long, cold, and dry winters, which makes it really tough. But I still do it, and I'm gonna give you some tips for winter composting. Because my region gets lots of snow, I like to tarp my compost just so that snow isn't getting in there, seeping in and making it like cold and sopping wet. It's not terrible if that happens, but it's better and it kind of gives you more control if you tarp. Because it's a smaller system, it's going to freeze way quicker than say a large area. If you have a large area, I recommend doing a large compost because there's going to be more insulation overall. If you have a larger yard or you want to dedicate a large space to compost, by all means, that's my high recommendation that you make a really big compost. Because actually, and especially in the winter, the larger it is, the more natural insulation you're going to get and that core is going to stay really nice and warm. If your compost freezes, it's okay. It's not going to like die and never come back to life. That's just not a thing that happens with compost. It might just kind of go dormant or happen very, very, very slowly. Also in terms of uh, making things easily accessible, I keep like garbage pails of dried leaves in my garage, which is right near my compost system. So I, my browns are easily accessible. If you have to go digging for browns or you don't have browns, that's a problem in the dead of winter. You have to collect leaves or have access to straw or lots of shredded paper and cardboard in the winter time to make sure you can maintain your ratio through the winter season. Another thing I really like to do, because I'm keeping my tarp on and it's relatively dry, I also kind of take out a watering can sometimes with a bunch of hot water from my tap and add that in just to the core area to kind of heat things up a bit or thaw a bit and get things going. Uh, and then I'll cover it back up, mix it up, cover it back up, and then also insulate the top with more leaves or straw. You may also want to change the way you compost. In the summertime it's like, la la la, skip to the compost, it's so sunny, what a wonderful day. In the winter it's like, oh, gotta take out the compost, gotta put on five layers and boots and uh, bring my child with me. 
I recommend having some pails right outside your door or a medium compost bin right outside your door that you can dump your kind of little kitchen scrap bin into and then wait for like a warmer day when it's around zero Celsius or something and you can take out your compost without freezing your body off. Because you want to get in there, right? You want to investigate. Move that layer of insulation uh, brown leaves off. Pour in your food scraps nice and spread out. Mix them in a bit. Pour in some hot water. It's that simple. Browns, greens. Four to one general rough ratio. Just think four to one. Air, moisture, browns, greens. Thanks for watching. Leave me any more compost questions you may have below in the comments. I love talking about compost. Thank you.